third arrest has been made in the case of Marine wife Brittany Kilgore's mysterious death. We have the details. Autism is more common than you may think. We'll bring you the new study's surprisingly high numbers. In a move that may transform the November election, President Obama announces his support of gay marriage. Stay tuned for the game-changing news that has the country talking. And you still have time to make Mother's Day plans. Stay tuned for the weekend weather forecast to see if you'll be hanging out with mom out in the sunshine. New scene starts right now. Good evening and welcome to this edition of New Scene. I'm Jai Nguyen. And I'm Kima Scott. Thank you for joining us. Sheriff deputies have arrested a third suspect in the murder case of Brittany Kilgore. 36-year-old Dorothy Merglino was at a downtown hotel when she was taken into custody around 6.30 last night. According to neighbors, Merglino shared a home on East Fallbrook Street with the two other suspects, U.S. Marine Staff Sergeant Luis Perez and Jessica Lynn Lopez. A source at the sheriff deputy's office says Mary Glino has been a person of interest since Kilgore disappeared last month. Two missing sisters have been found. 12-year-old Alexandria and 8-year-old Kalia Bain were found in the Mississippi woods after being kidnapped from their Whiteville, Tennessee home in late April. 35-year-old Adam Mays was charged with the killings of the girl's mother and their older sister. As state officers approached Mays, he shot and killed himself. The sisters were found unharmed. A tip from the FBI left, led officers to the area. Mays was one of the 10 most wanted fugitives. A would-be suicide bomber turns out to be a double agent working for Saudi intelligence agencies and the CIA. Al-Qaeda sent the agent to detonate an undetectable underwear bomb on a U.S.-bound airline in Yemen. Instead, the would-be bomber fled and turned the bomb over to the CIA. There is hope that the foiled attack will cause Al-Qaeda to become distrustful of its members. Officials say this could lead to Al-Qaeda tearing apart. This has been a big week for President Obama following North Carolina's vote to ban same-sex marriage. Our lead reporter, Jennifer Hua, is here to give us the details. Hi, Jennifer. How are you doing? Hi. Thank you, Johnny and Kima. President Obama attended a big fundraising event hosted by George Clooney at the Actors LA home last night, demonstrating a re-election campaign that is in full swing. The event comes just days after a surprising announcement made by the president earlier this week. These were the cheers coming from a happy crowd, celebrating that same-sex marriage was no longer legal in North Carolina. It's been a long campaign with many twists and turns, but one thing has been truth through it all, and that is our faith in God. Yeah. Supporters came together in a victory party. A cake sat in the middle of the room with a bride and groom on top, symbolizing ideas of the traditional marriage. As North Carolina celebrated, President Obama, who has often avoided his position on gay rights, finally stated his opinion. At a certain point, I've just concluded that, um, for me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. In response, presidential candidate Mitt Romney also voiced where he stands. Marriage itself is a relationship between a man and a woman, and, uh, and that's, uh, that's my own preference. I know other people have differing views. This is very... Uh, Obama's view also has topic. students here at City College I talking. Think people should be left alone and they should be able to make their own decisions and do what they want. The traditional way of human life is man and woman. You know, uh, men and women are made from God to reproduce. As North Carolina approves their ban on gay marriage, the nation remains split on this decision. Several other states are expected to vote on gay marriage rights this November during the elections. Both Minnesota and Maine are already on that list. So, Johnny and Kima, it's going to be an interesting election during November, given Obama's view is now out in the open. Yeah, it should be really interesting to see if um, it turns out in his favor come election time. Thanks, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. If you're driving through Hillcrest in a couple weeks, you may notice something a bit unusual. As of May 22nd, Blaine Street will be changed to Harvey Milk Street in honor of the legendary gay activist on his day of remembrance, Harvey Milk Day. 
Members of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community proposed the idea over a year ago, and city council members have officially approved the measure. Milk was the first elected gay official in California. There's been a change in plans for the public memorial planned for Junior Seau. According to Pastor Miles McPherson, all of Seau's events are now private. Despite the change in plans, the San Diego Chargers will be hosting a celebration of life in honor of the Charger linebacker and San Diego community icon. The event is set to take place tonight at 6.30 p.m. at Qualcomm Stadium. Access to the event as well as parking is free to the public. Californians may have to pay more for cigarettes if Proposition 29 passes on June 5th. The measure would add on an additional $1 tax on each pack of cigarettes. The new funds would go toward cancer and tobacco research. Supporters say that a high price would keep more kids from smoking, while opponents are saying the measure is flawed and encourages government spending instead of creating new jobs, which California needs most. A walk to raise awareness of the genetic condition Williams syndrome has been scheduled, also known as Williams Behrend syndrome or WS. This disorder can affect neurological development. WS affects 1 in 10,000 people worldwide and occurs in both male and females. The walk will take place at Old Poway Park on May 12th at, the, at 10 a.m. To, to show the support. Sorry about that. For more information, go to williamssyndrome.org slash San Diego Walk Williams to register or donate. A new study shows one in 88 children now has autism. Joe Beth DeVera tells us more about the disorder and who it's affecting. He's 14 years old, plays sports, and attends school. He is pretty gosh darn typical. <laughs> but at the age of two, I actually diagnosed him. Eric Estep was diagnosed with autism, a developmental disorder affecting behavior, social, and communication skills. I looked at my two-year-old in the stroller and said, I'm not going to take this. Eric's mom has spent the last 14 years trying to keep the family together. She now runs a support group for families with autistic children. When I talk to parents that have newly diagnosed children, I tell them to do everything that they can. Eric's mom encourages parents to do research and look at other ways to heal and support your child. A recent study by the Center for Disease Control now finds one in 88 children have autism. And I want to know why. Back in 2002, one in 150 had the disorder. It appears that increased numbers of certain types of brain cells uh, really are uh, behind uh, the actual phenomenon of autism itself. Pediatrician Dr. Marshall Littman says genetics is one of the driving factors. Personally have the feeling that it's a combination of genetics and as yet uh, unclear environmental factors. Eric's mom believes that there are certain vaccinations that can cause autism in children. But Dr. Marshall says that there's no scientific proof that actually shows autism is linked with vaccinations. This video shows Eric at seven months responding to his mother's Hi. call. Hi, baby. Just four months later, after receiving the hepatitis B vaccination, his mother noticed a difference in Eric. He reacted to his nine-month dose of the hepatitis B vaccine. Uh, within three hours, he was screaming, This is a disaster. We need to declare a war on autism. This is only getting worse. I need it to get better. Reporting for New Scene, Joe Beth DeVera. Doctors say getting diagnosed at an early age is critical. The new information from the study will help doctors be more vigilant when examining young patients. Ever thought of spending a semester in Costa Rica or Italy? How about Egypt? Stay with us for more info on City College's study abroad opportunities. And the Lakers face off with the Denver Nuggets for a spot in the semifinals. Why did LA fans go to bed in tears? We'll have a sports update after the break. But it would be safe to keep your distance until the secret. Smile. 